Hey there, lovely people. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Um, Ann and I have been out here all day in the field cutting all the grass. Well, all the weeds. Now this is grass. This is grass. This is looking amazing. However, we have a ton of weeds out here. And uh, yeah, they're worse this year than they were last year. And last year, you may remember was the first year that we started cutting after the corn uh, was harvested uh, all over the field. And uh, by mid, I, I don't know, mid-June or July, we had the tallest, thickest, most beautiful fescue out there that you could imagine. This time I probably waited a little bit too long for the uh, to cut down the weeds. I'm afraid they went to seed. Uh, Look at all these weeds we got around this brush pile. We still got to get cleaned out. We had to put a halt to that. We got the grapple still on the Case I-875C. Um, and we were using it to pull out trees and logs. And we've been stacking them right over there by the, behind that tree there uh, as we were cutting them. But my chainsaw had an issue. In fact, it's in the shop right now. The steel MS-261... Um, it had a um, what they call an intake valve uh, in the carburetor that uh, was faulty, and when the chainsaw would get hot, it would uh, just fluctuate. I guess the the gas flow, and they said they ordered one. And it came in, they put it on there, and they said it was faulty. It didn't work, and so they ordered another one. I hope that's what the problem actually is. And he told me that he's only heard of that once before, so it must be a rare problem. But I've got a bigger problem right now. A much bigger problem and it has to do with my case and so I want to tell you what's going on so the this is my second time mowing cutting the field this year okay and um, the first time after I finish cutting I, I pulled in right here where I normally clean the the, the uh, rhino off and I uh, I tried to shut the PTO off and the PTO would not shut off and uh i came back you know I, I shut the tractor off and of course the tractor won't start if the pto is engaged so the pto would not disengage and so that means that the blades were still spinning on the rhino and uh that being the case it was kind of a hard shutdown when i did shut the tractor off but i could not get the pto to go off well same thing happened today when we stopped to go to lunch i pulled right here and uh, I had the PTO in the off position, and it's so loud, you know, you don't know for sure if it's on or not. I didn't look down at the light that showed that it was still on. I just shut the tractor off, and it was this hard um, stop, this uh, unusual shutdown. Well, I realized immediately that it was doing the same thing that it had done the last cut. Uh, we went and grabbed lunch because I was starving. We came back, and... And then um, I turned the ignition on and I moved the PTO uh, lever. It's a manual uh, engagement lever uh, up and down, back and forth. And the light went off, so it disengaged. And I was able to turn the key and it started right up. Well, we went ahead and finished another two hours of cutting. We spent about a total of, um, I guess, six or seven hours today cutting. And I pulled back up here just now and uh, let me get my keys off my belt loop here and it did the same thing i i had to hard stop it with the pto still engaged all right let's go in here and i'll show you what's going on so i took the cover off of the the, the pto lever let's put the key in here and this is engaged and you can see that would normally go behind it. You got the little arrow right there. That means it's engaged. You pull it back and it's disengaged. Or heck, it's vice versa. I'm pretty sure that's correct. Anyway, let's show, yeah, back should be disengaged. I'm gonna drop this column down. I'm gonna turn the key on. And you're gonna see, this is the light that shows that the PTO is on. I have it in the disengaged spot. So I'm gonna go forward still got it on 
I'm going to go back, forward, back. It's still on. It's still on. And look here. Put the clutch in. Get nothing. Now this button allows you to manual or with this button you can electronically hold it down and it will electronically allow that PTO to remain on it didn't change just then maybe I'll let go of the clutch see what happens yeah it's not doing it anyway this button it allows the PTO to stay on when you're up and out of the seat otherwise even just setting getting up out of the seat the PTO is supposed to automatically shut off well I've raised up stood up out of the seat to see if that would shut the PTO off and it's not shutting it off even for the safety purposes without that button being engaged. So I'm not under warranty anymore. Case only had a year warranty with it. And uh, so I'm stuck. I can't start this tractor. Nothing, nothing's gonna happen. I can't see anything down in here that looks loose or not connected it feels like it's functioning correctly you guys might remember when i was giving you a walkthrough on this tractor i commented that my dealer told me that i was going to have an electronic engagement button for the pto and when i bought the tractor it ended up being this manual well i said in my video well hopefully because it's a manual pto lever there's less things that could go wrong than if i had an electronic button but obviously something has gone wrong try it again i'm gonna pull it back well it's already back forward back hey, look it went off you witnessed it it went off just then okay it is off and look here it's gonna start what the heck what is the deal? What is causing that, guys? I'm gonna call my uh, case dealer and ask them if they can give me any input at all, but I have no clue. The first time I cut, I raised the, uh, the wings of the, the Rhino, thinking that this was off, and I raised those wings up all the way to their, on the side, like this right here. And I want to show you something too, since I don't have a teed in, I've only got two rear remotes. This one right here actually controls both. And so if I pull back just slightly, you'll see that coming up. Now I'm going to push forward. That one's going to go down at the same time. The right one is going to go up slightly. Well, there you go. See? So it works together. If you just barely move this, you'll get movement on one wing or the other. But before I bring them up, I'm gonna pull down here and I'm gonna blow this thing off. Now that I'm disengaged, I will not be re-engaging my PTO. Luckily, we're finished cutting for the day. Um, but I am gonna go down here and blow this off and then I'm gonna raise my wings, lock them into place and uh, we don't have rain for the next two days uh, since it's been such a long day today i'm going to come back and i'm going to pressure wash uh, prior to it raining the underside of each of the wings you may remember in a previous video that we put a, a rust a primer that you could put on top of rust and a paint that uh, under each of the wings that is uh, designed to prevent rust on underneath this uh, bat wing, this rhino. And so uh, I've promised myself and I've promised you guys I'm gonna keep it clean underneath. So we're gonna come back in a day or two. We're gonna pressure wash the underside of this thing. But thank goodness, uh, yeah, I can stick this back on there, but what's the purpose right now? So yes, back is disengaged and forward is engaged. Show you how this works. This can just pop right off. This can go right on there and it can click in. And then this just pops right back on there. We're going to leave this thing disengaged for now. 
Good morning, lovely people. Today, I'm back at the land, at the lovely place, and we are going to be getting something fixed. And I have a correction to make. Uh, there have been a few times in our uh, on our channel here that I have mentioned that my 2020 Case IH 75C had a one-year warranty. Well, from what I've learned, it's two years, so I'm psyched. Now, uh, obviously, we just talked about the PTO problem, and uh, today I have a service technician from the case dealer coming up to fix that. He's actually dealt with it a couple of times, and from what I understand, it is one of those problems that you need to be aware of if you've got a new case, a uh, newer case. And I suggest getting this dealt with before that warranty is over. It's a pretty minor fix from what I understand. Uh, wrong side. But uh, it's something that can really ruin your day if, uh, if it's not taken care of. So you see the gas tank here. From what I understand, what he told me over the phone is somewhere in behind there, you need about a two foot extension that I don't have. I could have went and got it, but since it was under warranty, I thought I'd let them take care of it. And uh, there's a linkage down in there that apparently, possibly it's not tightened enough at the manufacturer facility where it's backing off for one reason or another. Anyhow, uh, it's got to be put back together or, or retightened. That, that's his theory. I'm hoping he's right because that sounds about as simple as it gets. And uh, so we'll see in a few minutes. He should be pulling up this way and uh, we'll see if we can get his permission to get this repair on video. But in the meantime, it is gonna be a lovely day. And uh, I'm looking forward to another connection I have right after that where I'm, uh, man, look at this grass. It is nice. Anyway, where I'm going to be meeting with uh, my electrician to discuss some go forward plans. Uh, I've been out of commission for a little while. You can tell, uh, not had a shave there uh, since I got the dreaded, uh, the word we won't even talk about that the whole world's been dealing with. Uh, but it, it put me down for a good three weeks. Uh, we'll talk more about that later. If anybody's interested, just comment. Let me know if you want to hear it. Everybody's dealt with it practically. It was my first time dealing with this, so it wasn't fun. Um, but thank God we, we made it through it. And at least at the moment, we're doing good. And uh, hopefully that will continue. We had a little storm while I was out of commission. And uh, it's, it's almost been four weeks since I've been down here physically. Now, I've been down here every single day, many, many times a day, looking at all my real link cameras live and getting notifications when turkey or deer or anything else might walk by or the wind or a bee. <laughs> Shade moving from these trees, these limbs that are blowing. Look how gorgeous everything looks up there. All right, well, hey, we'll just get back with you when this repair starts. I know you've been watching what went wrong. Hopefully, you're going to see what goes right. All right, we're up here about to get this repair started. So, there's a coupler under there? Yeah, there's a coupler on this PTO valve. Let me climb up in there. I'm going to get on the other side, and you can show me. So we're behind a fuel tank over here. This coupler right here is what happens is this when you engage it it pulls this coupler off and then when you go back this coupler shine that light i'm gonna just go, go ahead and shine it up there i'll see if i can find that right up here yep right there yep okay see how it just crimps on it yeah and a lot of times they don't get them tight enough and they'll just slide off and whenever you go to disengage it it just pushes the coupler back on the cable you want me to go up there and move the yeah, you Lever can. and see if you see yeah, anything. See it. All right. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Here we go. Let's see what we got. You see it move? So I just, I just engaged it. Now I'm disengaging it. Would it need? Would the tractor need to be? It shouldn't have to be running. Yeah, it's mechanical, right? Yeah. 
grab a little pry bar and see if it's loose. So. Okay. We're checking right now with the pry bar to see if this thing's loose at all. It looks tight, doesn't it? Yeah, that one's tight. Have you checked anything? You said you looked at the lever part of it? Yeah, I pulled the cover off up there around the uh, lever. And I looked down in there just best I could see. You can't see too deep. And uh, I didn't notice any, anything specific that looked out of place. All right, that one's tight. Let's hmm. see here. Could it be something electronic in the system? Yeah, it's never had a problem engaging that PTO. It's just disengaging it that's the problem. And typically that happens after I've mowed a while. Of course, I haven't really disengaged it or engaged it without that cutter on there yeah. to know. But keys are there in the seat if you wanted to test it. I just engaged it. I'm gonna see if it's loose now. Oh, okay. The PTO disengaged. That makes sense. still tight even in the disengaged well i was hoping it would be that something simple but we most i mean everyone i've done has been that yeah so now when they've described the problem did it sound just like my problem yeah i mean all the other customers that called and i mean it ended up being that right there when they wouldn't disengage so to recap what's going on i'll come out i'll hook up my rhino I'll bush hog for a while. I might stop to go to lunch and I'll try to disengage that PTO and it will not disengage. It just keeps going. First time I discovered it, I was already raising my wings up, you know, and I'm like, man, this thing's still spinning. So I lowered them and I tried to disengage it. And I ended up having to shut the tractor down hard with the PTO running. And it didn't like that, of course. It shakes a little bit. And then it won't start back. And I fiddled with it for five or 10 minutes and it finally disengaged with the ignition on you know of course it wouldn't start but the ignition was on i saw the light go out and uh then i started it, it started right up then i'd come back i'd mow some more and at the end of the day i had the same thing that's happened two mowings in a row and the last time it, it took a couple hours before it would re-engage Have you dealt with that before you just got to find that sweet little middle spot just barely move that hand there you go and you got to go back and forward like that just nice little gentle it ain't too bad when you get used to it it works out just fine now it's like when you lower that one a lot of times this one will want to come up that did it all right 
I'm gonna hop back in here. Looks like you're down. So you think I'll have better luck, but I mean something's got to be still going wrong, right? It, for it, it should well, disengage. What, I, what I'm thinking is when you're disengaging it, it turning 540. After everything gets hot, everything's totally different. Yeah. I mean, right now we're still running cold oil. Yeah, we're, we're even going. though our temperature gauge still is up to normal. Yeah, that's just our the oil, motor. Our oil temperature is not even hot. 
So it's probably what's happened after you run it for a while. And of course, when oil gets thinner, your pressure is going your pressure is going to drop just a little bit. So it ain't going to have oh, yeah. as much stopping pressure at the PTO break. Well, I went all year last year doing the same thing. Never had an issue. So if it's a temperature thing, you would think it would have done it from the get-go, always being that same well, temperature. Well, it's probably is what's happening is where you're disengaging it at a high RPM. It's probably got the PTO brake wore down. So, okay. So I mean, I mean, just where's the PTO brake located? Back there at it, the PTO. It's a hydraulic. It's like basically like a plunger. It's a piece, but probably about the size of a half dollar that pushes on the PTO clutch. Okay. Gotcha. When you disengage it, it, it shoots oil to it and it just basically pushes that clutch drum, just like a drum brake on a vehicle. Yeah. So if you got two pads that comes out, you just basically got a a plunger by the size of a half dollar with a brake pad on it that pushes against the drum. I see. Is that something that uh, needs to be repaired or can be repaired? I mean, it can be repaired. Is it an under warranty situation? I don't know. We'd have to check on that. I'd have to check. Because if I'm going to repair it, now's the time, you know, while I'm mm -hmm. still under warranty. I only got a, about six months on it left. Yeah. Uh, I thought I only had a one year, but there's a two year on cases. But, I mean, if you can just start engaging it. Well, I definitely will do that. Uh, now, obviously, don't know if that's going to rectify the problem because we ain't got it hot. Yeah. You know. I mean, engage it at a, as low as RPM as you can engage it. And just. Go a little out of time engaging it because it's it's mechanical and you can kind of get a feel for it, huh? Seems like it's harder on it when it engages at a low. Well, RPM. when you engage it, I mean they all engage hard because yeah. it's hydraulically engaged. Yeah. you're engaged she's smooth as can be and pulls like a dream I mean they make these push outs to work they're rated at a 50 horsepower tractor but I mean if you ain't careful you can kill a 50 horsepower yeah, tractor that's a fact. Push -out. well we made a we made a full loop around this lower field here and we're gonna see if they got the oil warm enough to do the same thing. You might want to try shutting her off like I do, but I don't know. And the way I've been shutting it off is I've been leaving the RPMs up there and just pulling the disengage on the PTO. And uh, that, that could have something to do with wearing down the brake on the PTO clutch, I guess. Disengage, it's still going, isn't it? Yeah, it's still turning and almost it, full speed. And it's disengaged, right? Yeah. It's going for it. But here's the light. The light went off though. Are we sure it's still going? It stopped, man. It just bounced off. Oh, well, we still did stop. Don't stop at all. 
in the other situ in the situation I've experienced. Maybe it's got to get a lot hotter. I, I just don't know. It's tough when you can't duplicate the problem easily. Yep. Going underneath to see if that linkage has done any movement. To me, uh, it seems like it uh, starting this thing in a lower RPM seems to be a little bit tougher on everything than starting in high RPM, but apparently that's not the case. Any feedback anybody can give me would be much appreciated. So you, when you pull back on the lever, it shifts the valve? Yeah, it, it, it just basically that cable just moves the valve back and forth. Yep. All right, when you pull back on that lever, it pushes that valve in and diverts the oil back to the brake. So the brake has to slow it down. It's not disengaging the, the clutch. No, the, the, it's all it's mechanically engaged. Yeah, but hydraulically driven. Hydraulically driven, and when you disengage, it's the brake that stops it. At yeah. some point, that clutch has to disengage, though. Right? Yeah, it disengages whenever you pull back on the lever. Unless there's something going on in the spool valve of it that's allowing oil to bypass and keep the clutch engaged. So, if the clutch was disengaging, just by sheer time and gravity, it would eventually stop, even without the brake working. Yes. Well, it don't do that. It keeps running full bore, disengaged. I can sit here for 20 minutes, and it will not stop. And I'll go back and forth and back and forth. And that light, when I pull back to disengage it, the light remains on as if it's engaged on the dashboard. We've not experienced that at all. So I'm thinking it's something in the clutch that's not disengaging or something well, leading to the would, clutch. It would be something in the valve. In the valve. So something in the valve, and the valve is what would open up or close to disengage that clutch. What do we need to do from here then? Because that's what's going on. Because like, if you're telling me that all the brake does is after it disengages from the clutch, then the brake slows it down to a stop, it's doing that when it finally disengages just fine. But it ain't doing that at all when it don't disengage. So I think we got us a valve issue or something leading to that valve. Because the heating up the oil that you were referred to, that was, your only concern about that was it actually the brake working, correct? Yeah, yeah so it, that can't be our problem. Because I can, again, I can shut it down, it'll stay here 10 minutes and run like I never even pulled that lever back. So it's, it's absolutely still engaged. It's not even trying to stop it. There you have it, folks. <laughs> we're gonna have a second. We're gonna have us a second to try at this, and I think we've identified the problem, or at least close to it. I think. I, I mean, if it's, if it's staying fully engaged and you disengage it, I would look more towards the valve. Right? Yeah, I promise you it is. And again, I got some video you can watch that will help you see it clearly that that's what she's doing. I don't think it had anything to do with the fluid getting hot and causing the uh, the brake on the uh, PTO shaft not to, to work properly uh, I, because it just never disengaged. But it reminded me of something. My, uh, my dad and my son. Uh, my dad, you would have, everybody here would have loved my dad. He, 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 was, he was the best. Uh, but he had, his voice was one of those voices that was kind of sometimes hard to understand and uh, sometimes hard to catch what he was saying exactly. Um, 
but you know me his son i pretty much i was able to interpret <laughs> and uh, know what he said and uh help other people understand but my son when he was quite a bit younger my dad was talking to him and uh my dad uh, said to my, because my, my son kept saying, what? What did you say? And my dad would say, uh, son, are you hard of hearing? And he said, no, pap, you're just hard of, uh, you're just hard of saying. And so <laughs> maybe I was hard of saying uh, today when I was uh, <laughs> trying to explain this issue. But I think we came to a conclusion and I think we know what the deal with was but i'll never forget that son are you hard of hearing no pap i think you're just hard of saying and he meant every word of it my son did thank you for joining us here at the lovely place if this content is inf informative or just entertaining or it makes you realize how smart you are compared to me that's all awesome just smash that like button i think it'll help us be seen by other people and it helps the algorithm. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, this would be a good time to do it because uh, we've got a lot of good content. I mean, we've done so many things and we've got so much more to come. We'd love for you to be a part of helping us turn this land into the lovely place. So we'll see you soon.